Please welcome Floris. Um, good afternoon. Um, so, yeah, uh, advanced fixtures in pirate test. So, um, pirate test fixtures are, are sort of a, a quite unique and powerful feature in um, uh, in, in pirate test, and, and they allow you. They basically allow allow you to to create your fixtures using dependency injection, uh, and it kind of creates a kind of isolated and and, and quite composable, as um, hopefully you'll see. Um, so I'll, I'll try and go, go through like. Um, so I've been uh, using PyTest uh, and been contributing for it for a few years now, and so basically on, based on like that experience, sort of, um, I'll try and build up some some more of the um, interesting things. Um, to, to build a big test that we find useful building a big test suite. Um, I'm going to assume some knowledge about PyTest test itself uh, and basic, uh, and, and you got the basic idea of, of how fixtures work, so how did dependency injection sort of works. Um, but uh, a very quick reminder um, of that. Um, so, so a fixture is, is basically, so, so any test function uh, can request a fixture by, by just taking a parameter, a named parameter, and the named parameter um, will then be looked up by, um, to a function that's decorated with this fixture uh, marker, um, which is just a function that returns a value, and that value is then in injected by PyTest into your, in your test function. You can create fixtures on different levels in, in your um, uh, files, so if you do it in a class, it will only be visible to um, members of the class. Um, so that's sort of very quickly the um, basics. Um, so the first thing to, to start um, sort of extend, extending that is um, caching um, of your fixtures. Um, this sort of, um, so, so basically by, by, by simply giving another keyword argument to, to this um, PyTest fixture decorator, uh, you, you can change the scope, the, the lifetime of, of when, how long that, that fixture lives. Um, normally it's being, uh, if, if you don't, provide an explicit scope and it will, it will just be thorn, uh, torn down straight away af after the test function has run. Um, but you, you can change the scopes into like session scope, um, you also got like module scope and class scope as well as function scope. And, and, then, and that basically means that you, you'll only um, ca call that function once for the scope. So in, the, in this example we, we got um, two differently scoped ones, one function scoped, um, one session scope. And, um, uh, we got two tests using both of these. This is fairly contrived, I guess. But if you run pilot test um, in the output, I'm using minus s here, uh, which kind of stops the, um, um, make sure that the print statements I put in my, in my test code actually can get shown up, because normally pilot test will ca um, capture that and only show it in case of failures. But with minus s, I, I, you can clearly see the order that things happen here. So, so the session setup happens first, and then uh, the function setup happens, then the dot, um, which is basically the test that's been run. Uh, and then the function f um, finalizes the teardown kind of happens and, and then that happens again. And, and so, so you can see how, how the caching sort of works there. So if you've got expensive uh, fixtures that you don't want to recreate the whole time, like a uh, populated database with a schema or something, or create web browsers or, or those sort of things, you, 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 this is a very common thing to start kind of using. Um, yeah, and you have sort of available scopes there. Um, next on, you can sort of, um, fi fixtures can just, uh, can be used in, in other fixtures as well, not just in test functions. And that makes it really composable because it, it, it means you, you can have, have a, um, so, so in this example for, um, you know, creating a, a the database connection fixture, and that might be used in some tests directly, um, but then, uh, for example, if this was a functional test and uh, one functional test need, needed, um, uh, a, a table to be there or something. I, I can just build on, on those existing fixtures and, and you can puzzle them together in, in that ma manner. Um, one of the things here, the um, request um, fixture that's being um, asked there is, is uh, it's the way to add finalizers to, to, to places. So you've probably already seen that, but it's essentially no more than just another fixture in pilot tests. It's just a built-in one that's provided. So, so that kind of happen happens uh, quite seamlessly. Um, the the um, test function here uh, sim simply uses the, um, the, 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 the latest one, the, the DB table fixture, but it could have been using both as well. So if it needed both of them for some reason, there's, there's no reason not, not to um, use, um, combine it that way either. 
Um, another thing you can do in, in uh, fixtures is, um, so, so normally when, when you run tests, you can, in PyTest tests, you can mark tests as, oh, I want to skip this test or something for, for whatever reason. But you can also do this based on, uh, trigger this from inside a fixture, for, um, basically. So, and that if, if you do it out, it means that any test that will be requested, will be using that fixture, will automatically be skipped in, instead of, um, so you can make this depend on something else. Um, so in this, this, this example is something that we use quite commonly when we connect to a remote service sort of thing. Um, so, so basically, f first try if the developers are running it on, on, their, on their own local host. If not, see if they're in the office, uh, try, try connecting to the server on that network sort of thing. But, you know, if neither is there, then whatever, um, let, let's go and skip it. And uh, combining this with, with uh, the session scope, for example, means that you don't keep doing that again and again because that might be slow operation or something. Um, another thing to note here is that when you call pytest.skip like this um, with, with, with a message, uh, is basically pytest.skip will uh, raise an exception in, in your code. So for the control flow of, of, of your fixture, you, you have to realize when you execute pytest.skip, you, you basically raise an exception in there and pytest will interpret that as, um, but no, no code will be executed afterwards anymore. Um, just like you got pytest.skip, there's a pytest.fail. Um, we'll do exactly the same, but failure test for whatever reason, if you want to do that. Um, and this is sort of a um, sort of sli slight sidestep, um, talking about introducing marks a little bit. Um, hopefully you've, you've already encountered marks, but pytest has this very flexible marking system. So it's basically just a decorator, pytest.mark. And then a name you choose yourself, sort of thing, and you can you can just apply that decorator to, to your test functions, and then your test functions will be marked. Um, that on its own isn't, you know, doesn't provide you very much. Um, you can sort of use that on the command line to select your marks, um, but it does, doesn't provide you that much yet. Um, one thing um, I'll, I'll get back to that on the on the next slide, basically. But one thing to note here is that um, you can. You can mark multiple um, marks. You can obviously apply multiple marks onto, onto a single test function or anything like that. Um, but another thing is that because marks are so flexible, they're sort of they're, they're allowed to be made um, available um, on the fly, basically. So, and one one sort of side step of, um, side effect of that is that if you make a typo in, in a marker, you may not notice that, and they may kind of hurt you later on. And that's why you sort of have two camps of people, I think. Um, some people like me prefer to use um, the minus minus strict option to pilot test so that you get caught out and you have to um, basically declare your markers up front and, and you get um, notified of any mistakes you're doing. Um, and the obvious way to just always enforce that is, is to write it in your configuration file. So, so that's basically the example of how you write that in the configuration file. Um, adopts basically always adds the, the command line option when you invoke it, and then you declare your markers. Uh, in this example now, if, if you try to run this, um, it would fail because uh, only one of the markers has been declared. Um, so, so that's sort of um, markers. But the so so mar markers are like. You know, used by plugins, etc. As, as well, if, if you've used plugins, um, they, they often make use of that. And one ma way to make use of that is inside, basically detect them in your fixtures. Um, so, in here, the test function wants um, a Mongo client. Um, um, it, it's a little bit contrived because PyMongo doesn't quite work like that, but almost. Um, <laughs> but um, so, so basically, it, it, it needs a Mongo client. Um, and we, we declare, we're also declaring, basically, the marker is basically declaring the um, database to, to put in the URI to be used at, at connection time. Um, and then when you actually look in the fixture, you can, ba basically what it tries to do is like, it tries to look, if the, is, that, is there a marker? Yes, um, then I'm gonna use that as the database name. If, if not, I'm just gonna use the default database name and then create the client and return it. Um, and to actually get, this marker information, you use request.node. Um, so so request.node itself is is, um, the, the te is basically the test node, which is a internal part of test representation of your test itself. So one of the attributes will actually be the, the, the function that you're actually testing. Um, and, and 
it ha it has quite quite a few uh, methods. I think you can l look it up in in the documentation. At least part of them are um, and doc documented. Um, but get marker is is basically how, how you get hold of a marker. Um, the only thing is like you, you then basically get this this sort of marker object. And in in the case, so so either you get this marker object or none. If you get none, um, we just use the default one here. But in the case of a marker object. The way it passes, because uh, as you see, the, the uh, mark uh, takes an argument here, and the way it passes on the arguments that you've specified, it, it just passes these on as this args and kw args um, attributes on your marker object, that, which is a, a list and a, and a, a dictionary, um, which is a very common representation. But the problem with that is that it's um, it's not how um, Python signatures sort of work. So I use this little um, helper function, which is like um, call API phone in this case. Um, and it doesn't do anything useful other than it uses uh, Python itself to pass the signature for me. So it means that if someone, um, if, if I wrote the decorator here differently, MongoDB DB equals users, it would still work because Python, Py, um, Python's um, um, would just pass the signature and, and, and return um, my database back. So, so that's how, how why I call that function with um, star args and um, kw args. So that's sort of a, a, a little trick to, to, to get native Python uh, signatures working there. Um, I have to add that in the future that um, I think probably one of the next releases um, that there is uh, going to be a slightly different way or, or, or a new way introduced of, of declaring markers, which will get around this, this little hacky um, uh, signature passing stuff. So, so that, that will improve, but th this is sort of the way we, we do things currently and it, it works very nicely. Um, another um, commonly used thing is um, fixtures can also be automatically used, basically. So normally fixtures um, are always dependency injected, so your test function requests the, the fixture by name it, it wants to have. Um, but um, so, so, sometimes that that might not not be um, not be suitable. So so there's this auto use equals true um, argument to um, the fixture decorator, and in that case it will basically be called for every um, test um, test function um, automatically, whether it's been requested or not. Um, so this is kind of a lot closer if you're used to the um, unit test kind of um, way of things to to set up and tear down because that just called every single time. Um, one one of the nice things here is as well that you can. Um, combine this with the uh, sc scope argument as well. So if you do this, um, so if you create an auto-use fixture with a, a scope, a scope of a, the session, that basically means you, you only ex it, yeah, only execute it right at the beginning of your test session. You, you'll be doing setup, and at the end, you'll be doing some teardown. Um, the auto-use fixtures um, in in this case, I sort of. Use it with an un, um, with an underscore, so sort of indicating that you know I don't expect it to be used immediately or directly. Um, but there's nothing stopping you from um, there's nothing stopping you from returning a value as well and explicitly requesting it. So if someone explicitly requests it, you can just mix um, mix those two together as well. Um, so in in, the, in this case, as you'll sort of um, use it to create this uh, kind of custom skipping logic. Uh, for something that's only um, supposed to work on, on Linux. Um, there's various ways of doing that, I guess, but it's an example. Um, then parameterizing fixtures is sort of another very um, powerful um, feature, feature that you can do with um, fixtures. Um, so in this example, sort of, um, we have a test function, um, the, the first test function there, test uh, TXN. Um, which, which just uses um, basically a URI to, to connect to a database and say um, the, the problem here is you know I want to ensure that whatever this works with PostgreSQL, Oracle, and, and SQLite, for example, at the same time. Um, so instead of having to write three tests or, or write tests with different fixtures or something, you, you can basically parameterize your, your, your fixture itself. So um, by parameterizing this fixture, um, PyDA test will, will create We'll, we'll call my test functions three times, once with each, with each parameter. And the way you know which parameter, so, so the, um, the arguments in the, in the list to um, the params keyword in your fixture decorator 
it can, can be anything, it's, it's up to you. So you can use direct values there if you want to. Or, um, in this case, I use sim simple strings, which then I'll probably use later with an if statement or something. Um, but you get access to the parameter being passed in by this requests.param um, attribute on, on, on the requests fixture. And that's how you access them. Another um, sort of building on top of that is, is if you have one multiple um, fixtures with, with parameters, you can combine them, which is basically what the um, last function does. Um, so, so in this case, because both, uh, both, both fixtures are parameterized, PyTest will, will basically call the last function six times because it requests both of these, and it, you will get each combination tested automatically. So in this case, sort of the, the example um, suggests that I want to test the connection of both IPv4 and 6, um, but you automatically get all combinations of um, of, of your fixtures. Um, but, but so, sort of slightly building on top of that is so, sort of um, you, you may you can optionally sort of mark your parameters again in in, in your um, parameterized list. So you can uh, if, if there is a fixture. So in this example, I, I, I don't assume that every developer has has their Oracle um, DB API installed. Um, so, so I just, you know, try and pull Oracle if, if not. Um, and I sort of introduced two things at once here. So I sort of, um, so we've already seen, seen the markers basically. So this is PyTest that marks that skip if is a built-in marker that PyTest provides. Um, um, but instead of kind of using it directly on something, I just assign it to a variable now. And that's just to make my line a bit shorter later on basically. Or maybe I want to use it more than once or something like that. So you can just assign your marker to a variable. And, and now you have that marker object there, which you can use later on. Uh, in this case, I apply it basically on, because it, um, my, my parameter is, is not, a, not a function, so I can't really use decorator here. So I just manually apply that on, onto my parameter. Um, and, and it means that if, if I don't have Oracle installed here, um, despite that the test function should be parameterized, on, only one version of them will be run, and the second will be skipped. Um, This is sort of an example um, taken from, a, well, roughly from an early version of the PyTest Django plugin. But it shows kind of how you can see, ba basically the, the, the thing here is the request of fixture names um, part of, of, of the fixtures. And, and it allows you to see all the other fixtures that are being requested by, by the current test function. So you can, in this case, I, I'm, I'm just stopping um, to two fixtures that are, are mutually exclusive being used at the same time by simply calling pytest or fail on um, if, if I detect that case. Um, but, but you can sort of peek in, into, into what the test function is asking and sort of ha have, a, have a look at uh, the other fixtures around, um, which sometimes um, could be a useful thing. Um, then sort of a very, um, uh, another sort of, um, step aside, I guess. Um, you've probably, if you've been using PyTest, um, see, seen this contest of Py files, but it, um, so, so this is sort of typical um, directory like you'll, you'll get. And at the simple level, contest of Py, so, so you can declare your fixtures in there and then you'll see them in their entire directory, basically. Um, but contest of Py is basically, from PyTest's um, point of view, it's just a, a, another plugin, just like any other PyTest plugin you can install. But it's a, uh, um, it's a per project kind of plugin, and, and essentially, when, when you start building a big test suite, you're going to be building a per project plugin kind of thing. Uh, the plugins work with this um, with this hook system. So basically, you, in your plugin, you you find a function with with your hook. Uh, Pilot test will at, at certain times call these hooks. Then, if if you defined one, um, these are just a few common ones. Um, there's a much longer list in the documentation. Um, and I'll, sh I'll be showing like basically the, the add option one here, which is sort of um, adding a new command line option. The um, parser object you get um, in that hook is basically just an arg pass um, command line parser. Um, so you can just uh, use that documentation to, to add, add your options here. And I'm here adding an option saying, um, so basically the idea here is that if, if my, for, for my script that invokes pilot test on my CI server, um, I'll be just passing in that minus minus CI option so I know if my test suite is running on the CI server. Um, and just very quickly, like 
you, you can get to it um, to command line options, both from inside fixtures as well as test functions. Again, via this request um, object, which has a config, um, which is basically PyTest config um, representation. So you can get access to both command line options or uh, configuration file options in there. Uh, and, um, and basically, the both request.config and uh, PyTest config are basically the same uh, instance. There are different ways of getting to them. Um, and those two, um, you, co combining all of that together, sort of, um, I, I can. Th this is sort of extending on a, an example I used earlier. Um, so, so again, um, so so here I have this external service. Uh, in this case, a Redis service. Um, that that before I checked, oh, is it on my developer's laptop? Is it on my? Uh, is it in the office or something? But and and I, I, I was just skipping those. But in this case, um, by, by using request config and checking that option, I can make sure that when I'm running on my CI server, it really is going to execute. Uh, and if not, I actually get a hard failure. So, so I, I can see. So, so if, if the server is down, I don't just suddenly stop stop testing uh, part of my test suite, um, sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's yeah, that's another thing that we use quite a lot, um, and is, is um, pretty handy. Um, that um, yeah, that's basically what um, I had so far. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope it hope it was useful and. Uh, Okay, so the question is, uh, I showed how to get uh, the names that, the other fiction names that are being requested by the f uh, test function. Uh, is there also a way of getting the value of them? Um, the answer is sort of twofold. Um, definitely yes, obviously, by simply requesting it yourself. Um, but that's not dynamic. Um, there is an escape hatch to, to do that dynamic, although it's discouraged because um, so basically, on, on the request um, fixture itself, there is a get funcarg uh, value um, call, which you can then use to, to call another value. Um, but gen gen so, so that's how you could get to it. Um, but generally, that's discouraged because um, if you use that on if you use that on one that's already requested, it's it's probably okay. But if you use that on one that hasn't been requested yet, um, PyTest sort of loses its view of. Um, all the combinations of, of things and it, and, it, and it won't be able to uh, do its caching and scoping properly as well, etc. So, so you have to be a little bit careful with using um, that escape hatch, I would call it. Um. Hey, uh, I wasn't familiar with the parameterization that you could do with fixtures. Does that play well with the other parameterization that you can apply to tests? Um, yeah, so the question is, um, does the parameterization on fixtures uh, that, that you can do on fixtures play well with the parameterization you can do on, on tests directly? Um, so on tests directly, in case you don't know, uh, it's, it's basically another marker, so it, uh, you can decorate the test with um, at uh, pytest.mark.parameterized uh, and then give it a list of, of its parameters. Um, yes, th those two basically work um, together. Um, when, when you do, so so when when you're requesting, so so when you use the decorator uh, at parameterized, uh, you you have to use the request and request of param again to to get hold of the uh, the value that's being parameterized. So so when you when you're requesting request, um, which is or, which is already going to be parameterized and other parameterized fixtures, you're just going to get all the combinations again. Um, so yeah. Um, so the question is, um, 
when, when, when uh, pilot tests uh, and, and coverage are used together, if you import stuff at um, the conf test .py, in the conftest.py file, it tends to um, be skipped by coverage. Um, and someone is nodding yes. In, uh, yeah. uh, the problem is uh, plugging is a problem, with a coverage plugin. Uh, what I'm uh, just doing is I use the coverage script to run pytest, and then uh, there is no problem that I have to import level. Because uh, the problem is that if you use something in a fixture, then that's not in coverage when you use a plugin. Yeah, so, so, um, so, uh, the yeah, well, well the, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, the, the, plug, the plugging itself kind of can't catch that all, um, as, as well. Um, the, Okay, so the new the new pipe coverage plugin should be fixed. <laughs> so it should just work then, basically. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, if we're all done, then thank you again, Forrest.